Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in my software design series. In the second part, we're going to be talking about the flyweight design pattern. So make sure you check out the first part so you can get an introduction to that pattern. I'll give a brief recap and today we're going to dive into some code and then wrap up the actual pattern talking about some pros and cons. So with that said, let's go ahead and get a quick review of the flyweight design pattern here, which again is a pattern for working with, well, shared data in the name of performance. That's how we sort of talked about it in the last time here. So again, here is the gang of four book definition from the book, uh, design patterns, elements of reusable object oriented software, in case you want to check out that book, again, the gang of four pattern. Uh, and again, as mentioned, this is usually a pattern that we're using to gain performance here. So I'm going to go ahead and flip through these slides quickly as we looked at them. And this is a structural design pattern, meaning this is going to help or rather change how we think about how we organize our code. Now, one of the keys in this pattern that we looked at last time, so just doing a really brief recap for you, was again, this sort of transformation, right? Where we have some tree here where we use the same mesh, the same bark, and the same leaves as the next tree over. So again, on this top diagram here. But instead, if those mesh, bark, and leaves, or whatever parameters for that particular object are shared, then you can, well, just have one shared object here. Now, again, usually a hint as to what kind of things you can share are things that are const or immutable. Not always. Again, you might want to share some of the state that changes. Uh, but again, that's the basic idea here. So anyways, just flipping through this very quickly. This is what we looked at last time. And the interesting thing was, again, to think about with this pattern, this idea of intrinsic versus extrinsic state, or again, the things that could be shared or not shared. So what are unique to each instance of an object versus, again, what is shared? or in other words, extrinsic to the flyweight. So again, just to define what the flyweight is, that's the model here. That is the thing that is being shared here, okay? So those were some of the terms here. And again, just highlighting them here. So the flyweight object here is this model, and then the extrinsic state is these uh, unique parameters, such as things like the position for each of these trees here, which we could see they're positioned in different places and space. Okay, so let's go ahead and keep moving through this. We're going to code up these examples. Uh, but if you want to look at these slides, again, check out the description or the previous video here on flyweight. Um, okay, so and we also looked at where we might use this in computer graphics and things like rendering. So I will talk about related patterns, but we want to go ahead and start writing some code here. Um, so let's go ahead and dive into this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just create a main here for our flyweight just so we have a little playground for us to create some code. And let's go ahead and give us an IO stream just in case we want to do any IO. Uh, and then let's go ahead and create our flyweight here. So this is going to be, in this case, the model, which again, I'm just going to label as the flyweight here. And let's put it in quotes uh, because that is the thing that we are sharing. So this is what we want to share. Okay, just so that is clear here. Okay. Uh, and we'll go ahead and compile this in C++ 20 or maybe even 23 these days. Uh, let's make sure that that is uh, working. That's perfect. All right, great. Um, so, okay, so in order to make use of this model, again, we could take the example of a tree or as we talked about previously in a gaming example, uh, something that we wanna share here. Um, so let's go ahead and Maybe just illustrate with that tree example here, just to do something a little bit different here. Uh, a tree, and it's going to have a model as part of it, okay? So this is going to be um, the extrinsic uh, state here. Let's see if I can spell extrinsic properly. Extrinsic, there we are. Um, and because it is something that we are sharing, right, this is going to be a pointer to something here. Okay, so let's go ahead and just label it as follows. And we'll have some unique things here, like uh, let's say the X, Y, and Z position of our tree, right? We could wrap this in a position or whatever, uh, but just uh, for illustration here. Um, oops, actually, let me uh, <clears throat> let me label this properly here. This is the uh, extrinsic state, and this is going to be the um, model uh, itself is the, the flyweight here, okay? So uh, let's go ahead and just work with this much here. And then for our model, the things that are going to be shared are going to be things like the uh, mesh. They're going to be things like the, uh, what do they have, like the bark uh, and the leaves in the example. So things like that. That's what's actually going to be uh, shared. So the intrinsic or IE shared state within the flyweight. 
all uh, instances are shared. Okay, so it's intrinsic. It's part of that property of being the uh, actual flyweight. So that's the idea with it. Okay, so hopefully that kind of makes sense here. Um, and then if we want to do something with a flyweight, let's go ahead and say we have some, uh, again, we used this as an example before, like a draw operation here. Uh, and what I actually want to do here is pass in the uh, tree, which I'm going to put the extrinsic uh, state here, again, just trying to label things. Uh, and then we could just write out, you know, in this case, the extrinsic state X. Uh, let's just write out all these just so we could kind of see things. Uh, the Y and the Z here. Okay, so again, we're taking a little bit of a graphics example here, but again, this is how you might use this thing. Now, again, depending on how you're using this, we can try to be a little bit more efficient, right? We could pass things in maybe by reference here um, and by const reference, again, because we might not want to mutate this. So again, that's going to depend on your domain, what kinds of you know operations are actually allowed here, uh, but that's the basic idea. Now, I actually want to do something kind of interesting here, and maybe that's actually define some structs for these um, again just so we have like a real object uh, in memory allocated um and you know i could actually uh do these in line uh so let's actually just do a mesh here uh, i don't know what the properties are going to be maybe a uh, an array of data here uh you know maybe there's 100 integers or something describing the geometry of the mesh you know just just to give us some uh you know thing that we can play with here okay i'm just gonna do one example so we don't clutter things up uh, but just want to, again, remind you of two things. One, I can have a locally scoped uh, structure, right? This shouldn't cause any problems. Um, you know, my, my lack of semicolons will cause problems on occasion. But yeah, that is totally fine here, okay? So uh, don't forget that little C++ thing. That's something I, I forget, uh, or some folks uh, forget. Uh, but anyways, that's something that we could do uh, locally here. Okay, so that's the basic idea. Let's try to start using this now. So let's create a tree. Um, Let's actually give ourselves a constructor here um, and let's provide a uh, X. Uh, oh, let's see. We have these as floats here an X, a Y and a Z. And we'll use an initializer list here to have our X, uh, Y and Z initialized here. Again, just practicing some of our uh, C++ again. We can find these things uh, in the series uh, that makes it relatively trivial. Um, and let's go ahead and scroll down here. Let's create a tree T1 uh, and construct it with, uh, I don't know, some values here. One, two, and three, and tree two. Okay. Uh, and then we'll have our model here. Just create one. And we can do the model draw operation with T1 and the draw operation with T2. Okay, so let's go ahead and just compile that. And it's compiling and working. Okay. Um, now let's go ahead and run this program here. Oops, let's actually make the tree T, uh, T2 here. <laughs> make these values uh, something unique here five, six, and seven. Just so that you can again see that uh, both of these draw operations that are part of our flyweight here, the model are just being fed some data here, T1, the actual extrinsic state or external data. And then as far as rendering our model, right, we have this draw operation, okay? So again, that's the basic pattern, the basic idea with flyweight, this idea that you're just sort of passing around the data that we need here. Now, this at this point kind of brings in an interesting discussion um, in, in the sense that, um, well, there, there's a few more things actually I can do to make this demo a little bit more clear. One is just, Again, here, let's put some commas in our output. Again, not super critical, but again, just don't want to confuse anybody. Uh, here, let's run that one more time. I'm going to do this in just one line here. This so we can uh, iterate a little bit faster. Oops, uh, adding in commas here instead of the stream operators. There we go. Uh, there we are. Okay. Uh, anyways, just that way you can see the data here, five, six, and seven for tree one and uh, tree two. Uh, but the conversation that I want to start opening up with this flyweight is talking about how you want to organize this data here. Okay, the uh, again, you could do something like this where this is clearly one object that's being shared and doing this operation, right? In practice, we're doing something with this mesh data and you know rendering the actual uh, data using some graphics API. Uh, but that's how we can set things up here. But 
the other things that we might want to think about is, you know, do we want to just have this model uh, be the thing that is shared? And that might be fine, right? Um, the actual Gang of Four pattern uses a factory to create these flyweights here. So I don't necessarily have to access them um, directly in this way. Like maybe I could use some sort of database or in this case, a map or a factory. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and code that up here. Uh, so what we're gonna go ahead and do is set up a, uh, and we saw this in the slides previously, uh, flyweight factory, uh, and again, you know, call it like the model factory or something like this here. Now, again, some other text will call this like resource manager. Uh, and this is like a basic way to structure it again with the intent of implementing this flyweight pattern. At least that's again, what we're looking at that we want to be able to share objects or just create one of them here. Uh, so the basic idea is that we'll have some sort of data structure here. Uh, again, could be a map, could be an ordered map. Uh, so, or try an ordered map. For whatever reason, myself and a lot of folks also, uh, you know, just do map because it's shorter, uh, probably. Uh, but again, unordered map gives you typically average case, uh, constant time uh, operations versus map, which is log of n. So just keep that in mind, okay? Uh, you know, for the complexity, so it just depends on if you need that. Uh, look up here, you know, so something like that. Just again, you can check out my other C videos. Uh, to learn more about map versus unordered map. Uh, but anyways, let's go ahead and create a map here. Uh, and I'm just gonna refer to these by a string for the key, and then we'll have a pointer to the actual model here, okay? Uh, and let's just call this, you know, our, uh, let's give it a better name than map. Uh, I'm gonna call it our uh, fly weights here, M fly weights, okay? That's a little bit better here. Our model fly weights or whatever we wanna uh, refer to them. Let's let's be more specific. Good names are uh, important. Um, so anyways, uh, that's the basic idea here that we're gonna write a little lookup function here uh, to get our fly weights. Now you could template this. Let me just give you some more ideas. Uh, note, uh, we could also uh, template our factory on the uh, value. Uh, that's probably what I would do here, right? So this part here, and then you'd have everything in your uh, particular system looked up by like some string here, okay? So, you know, we probably want our models to have some ID for a string. Again, you can think about uh, how you wanna set this up here. Uh, but anyways, let's go ahead and just complete our factory and then we'll move from there. Uh, so we want a way to get this back here. Uh, so I'm just gonna call this git, uh, flyweight, get instance, you know, get model. Uh, but let's use the word flyweight since that's what we're learning about. And we're gonna look this up by uh, string. Uh, so that's gonna be our key. Uh, and then we need to do something like, uh, let's see here, the classic, uh, find our actual uh, key. Uh, I'm gonna break this up into um, some steps here. Uh, let's see. So we have an iterator here. Again, there's many ways to do this, um, but this should work here. So we're going to look through our map here. We're going to try to find the key. And again, this is going to return a iterator here. And basically if uh, the iterator is not equal to m model flyweights.end, so meaning we did find something, then we will just return whatever that iterator's uh, value is. So the second thing here, right? So uh, we have a key value pair. Again, you can look up how to use map here. Uh, we're gonna search to see if we find the key, which is just a string. So again, looking through in a sorted map and then just return uh, the value here, right? Which is our return value for a model here. Uh, otherwise, what we could do here is actually uh, create a new model, uh, again, M, uh, and let's let's keep allocate it, right? This is gonna be something that uh, lives. And eventually we'd wanna write a uh, destructor for this so our factory could be responsible, I suppose, for also deleting uh, all of our flyweights here. Uh, and let's go ahead and insert this into our map here. Model flyweights, uh, the actual key, whatever we were searching for equals, you know, this new model here. Uh, and then ultimately we wanna return uh, that model as well, okay? Uh, because that's the idea. So we're going to get a flyweight or create it otherwise. Okay. Uh, so this is one way to structure it. 
get an existing flyweight or otherwise create a new model that we can retrieve slash share multiple times. Okay, so this is the other idea here. Let's go ahead and compile this, see if we did anything silly. Uh, still works and still runs. And then instead what we wanna do here, uh, let's go ahead and just show this uh, using our flyweight factory here. Uh, and again, I suppose there's several ways that we could structure this flyweight factory, right? And what I mean by that is we could structure this to have a static member function. This could be a static map, right? We could turn this into a singleton. Oftentimes factories are singletons, uh, but I'm just going to instantiate one of these. Let's, you know, pretend we have ownership. Uh, I'm just going to call this factory. And then from our factory, what we will do is we'll go ahead and call get flyweight, which is going to return us a pointer to a model. And we have to figure out what it is. And let's say it's like oak tree or something, uh, because that's the type of tree or something that we want here. And then what we'll actually do here is uh, on our model, if I scroll up here, right, we'll call the appropriate draw operation and pass in the data uh, to you know position our oak tree. So draw operation T1, something like that here. Let's go ahead and see if this compiles. Compiles just fine here. Uh, let's go ahead and do this with um, palm tree. I'm gonna get to think of some trees here uh, with data T2. Okay, so it's still going to work as we've previously seen here, doing the same thing, same operations, uh, but again, from our factory here. And what I wanna do here, just to give us a little bit of debugging here, is uh, let's just do a little printout and say found, or I should say reusing, and let's just go ahead and put our key for a printout here. Okay, so we shouldn't see this immediately but from our factory, right, uh, we're not seeing anything. In fact, let's go ahead and comment out this previous, just so we have one output uh, to see here. Uh, but let's go ahead and this time I also want another oak tree, uh, but it's going to be at, you know, position T2 here. Okay. In fact, let's give ourselves some more data to work with uh, here. T3 and some new values here. Okay, maybe these are positions or something. Uh, and we'll pass in T3 uh, here. Okay, so hopefully this kind of makes sense here. Uh, but we do one, two, three with our tree here. We're drawing an oak tree model or creating it uh, rather for the first time, five, six, seven. We do our operation with uh, the data for T2 here, which is our tree data. Again, something that's unique with these values here. Um, actually, these and these values aren't the thing that matters. It's just the, the unique object that's carrying the uh, extrinsic state here. Uh, and then we have, well, we want to do another oak tree drawing here, but this time with the data for T3. So you can see that we're going to reuse it and then uh, paste in our data. So that's the idea, again, of just sharing here. So in this example, we've actually covered a few different patterns that are available on this playlist. So let's do a little bit of a recap uh, just to scroll through all the code. Uh, so the basic idea is here's our flyweight. We have to figure out what that is. What is the thing that we're going to share? Okay, and that's going to have its own sort of setup here. And then the operations are going to take in some state to do something interesting. Okay, so we've kind of separated this out here. Uh, and then uh, this is the extrinsic state or the data that we're passing in. It could be in one or multiple objects, however you want to set things up. And if I scroll down here, um, that's basically what we did in this first example. We created some unique data, we had one model, and then we did our operations on it. Uh, but then again, if you have lots of different objects, let's again pretend you're in a game or something, uh, you might want to just load this data once from configuration files or whatever, and maybe have a string or a key that's a file name or the 3D model name, you know, whatever it might be. Uh, and then you instantiate that multiple times, and then you just pass in uh, the data here uh, as shown here. So this is one way that you could do this through the flyweight, just accessing sort of like a database, uh, your main object, and then doing a draw operation with different data here. Okay. Uh, so this is just an example of using the factory. In practice, this is kind of ugly, right? To have to write factory dot get flyweight or whatever. Um, you know, it, it's clear in the sense that you know you are 
using the flyweight pattern and you're looking for and trying to only instantiate data one time, right? So you only have one oak tree um, that's being reused or one palm tree or whatever. That's that's pretty clear here. Um, in practice, you probably, you know, return a reference or whatever to this object or something uh, and then just call that directly on the uh, draw operation, right? Like you have a git model uh, function or git component if you're making this part of a component system. That's the basic idea here. Uh, so hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that's kind of a fun pattern for you to think about architecturally. That's why this is a structural pattern here, uh, because we are you know, having to restructure our code or our objects to think about kind of splitting them up into uh, the shared state, which is the model, and then you have your unique state, which is whatever else. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense from the point of code here. Now, I want to talk to you about pros and cons here, but there are some related patterns here. Um, this is getting into things like entity component systems. For those of you who have seen those in the game programming world, they're quite popular. Um, you know, they're basically databases. So also, if you've worked in a database world, um, that's also the other idea here. Uh, so I got a little teaser here for what's coming up. So make sure you stay subscribed on the series for the component pattern. Uh, I mean, here is the idea of having an object with uh, multiple components where you can add things and retrieve the components here. Uh, that's the basic idea here. Here, I'll come back on the screen. Um, but we will talk about this again, having this map of components and how to work with things here. Um, and then, you know, here's here's the basic idea here where the shared components, for instance, lines 14 through 17 here, where maybe I have a bunch of textures for my game objects uh, could be shared. Again, these could be any sort of thing like in the previous video where we talked about the glyphs or the characters like the letter A, the letter B, the letter C, right? If you imagine those little textures or images that you're pasting on your screen, those would be things that would be shared. You don't want to instantiate a new character every time. Okay, so a few other things to think about here uh, as far as related patterns. Um, uh, as I mentioned, the component system. Uh, but I think an example, interesting example, and this is one that I do with my students sometimes, is with OpenGL, the API here, in which you build sort of a handle system. So I have a approximate view, you know, if you want to take a snapshot of it, here it is, of how the OpenGL API works. Um, and what I'm showing here, I'm going to flip through these slides, you know, quickly, and then you can take a screenshot of it and kind of follow through the code. But the idea is just to sort of have a handle into data that's shared. OK, so let me explain here what this means. This is roughly how things work. If you've done a lot of C programming, this is going to make sense to you because you didn't, um, you know, you don't have object oriented programming in the sense that you just have data and are sort of moving data around. So in a way it, it maps nicely if you're thinking like a C programmer doing object oriented programming. Uh, but the basic idea is uh, in OpenGL, you have like one shared like global object, they call it a context. Uh, here, uh, which is sort of familiar to the flyweight and this idea of a context. Uh, but the idea is at line 17, you see this vertex buffer object where I, I just created for an example, a hundred uh, of these objects here, whatever they are. And I'm going to have a handle or the index, right? A value zero through 99 um, that I'll look up this particular vertex buffer object. Okay. And I could have as many things uh, use that uh, handle as I want here. Now, OpenGL is a state machine, so there's a little bit of a story here about having only one of these, uh, you know, selected at a time. Uh, but that, that's the basic idea here. Okay, so here's that vertex buffer object. I'm going to have a handle into this sort of database of other objects. Again, we can think of these like 3D objects, vertex buffer objects, so vertices, like geometry, making up a 3D shape. Okay, that's the basic idea. Um, so that's the basic idea here. Okay. So anyways, uh, we want some handle into some uh, object here. And, and, and again, we could have this shared, we could have multiple handles if we want. Again, a little bit of a different story when it comes time to drawing in OpenGL, uh, right? You, you draw one thing at a time, uh, so to speak. Um, uh, well, we won't get into instancing stuff, but um, that's the basic idea that I want you to be thinking about, right? You have this global set of things here that you could just share and look into, okay? So that's, that's again, the idea, and this reminded me of the flyweight, uh, this idea here. Uh, so again, then you're just sort of passing this handle around to access some object, some global object um, in a like database like manner. OK, so this is just something I was thinking about and something that I share when thinking about OpenGL and also just to think about how we organize our code and how we access data. Again, that's when I think about these structural design patterns, what we're ultimately doing. How do I structure different blocks of data so they can be 
shared ultimately for performance, which is what the flyweight's about. Um, and then what does that look like in different contexts of code? Sometimes we have a flyweight factory, which I showed you at the end of our coding example. Sometimes we have sort of a handle system, which is more like a database accessing different uh, things that we need or components uh, and some uh, different patterns. So anyways, I'm going to leave this uh, to you here. Um, and this is the basic idea of using handles instead of, uh, you know, uh, just as an idea here. Um, alrighty. So anyways, um, let's go ahead. I'm going to click through this. Uh, I think you get the kind of the idea here, um, about, you know, how this is maybe similar to the idea of a, uh, flyweight or making some sort of, um, you know, database like system where you can share data. Okay. Uh, and again, the, the idea with OpenGL is you're selecting different handles into different things to uh, draw and sometimes changing the state uh, as you draw things. Uh, so anyways, let's give a summary and kind of wrap up the flyweight pattern here. You know, some pros and cons that I could immediately think of here are that the flyweight pattern can really improve the performance of your code, again, because you're sharing data. Uh, you're not making lots of uh, replicas of things. You're not having to change state a lot of times. Uh, by looking at different copies in memory. So oftentimes the performance of your system can often be greatly increased. Uh, again, both in terms of the uh, reduction in memory usage, so you can keep more things in cache, which is good. Uh, your temporal locality is very good because you're referencing the same object over and over again, even as you are maybe doing slight variations. So again, uh, I like to think of this pattern as a way for flyweight or making your performance fly and do very well. Um, the sort of neutrals are, you know, you're sharing um, resources, um, which means that you're, you know, since you're sharing some piece of data, you're, you're looking at the same thing and maybe you're getting more consistency. So as a result, that could bring more correctness um, to your program. Uh, again, that just sort of, you'll have to think about your use case, but that was just something I was thinking about. Um, with this flyweight pattern that was kind of interesting as a result of sharing your data. Sometimes sharing your data is good, <laughs> right? There's a performance argument, um, but it also means there aren't, um, I mean, in the case of a 3D example, you can see the actual 3D object that it's the same and should be the same data. Um, but another example is like, again, the text example, you know all the characters are gonna be the same. The same letter A, for example, is showing up, right? So there's less room for like, errors instantiating new objects and creating them. That's that's what I'm getting at here. Um, you do have to be careful with shared pointers and the potential performance problems there. Uh, so if I go back to our code example, uh, I used a raw pointer um, for our map here. This I could make a shared pointer. Uh, in fact, for completeness, let's just, um, let's go ahead and just do it because I, I think people are gonna ask me about it. Um, and I think it's good for you to just see another variation here. But um, all right, I could make this a uh, shared pointer, OK, uh, to model, uh, just like that. Uh, and then basically just take this, and anywhere I have model, um, uh, just, just, just change it. Uh, so in fact, let's just go ahead and do that. Let's do things the modern way, shared pointer. Uh, and this is going to avoid any memory leaks for us, uh, which is good. Uh, let's call this again, shared pointer model, uh, then m equals, let's see, standard make shared. Uh, it's going to be a model. Uh, there's nothing in the constructor. Uh, and let's see here. Uh, that does the trick here, right? So nothing, nothing wild here. Um, but, uh, you know, you might have to think about ownership. You might have to think about um, with your shared pointers, perhaps if you are deleting objects frequently, um, there is a shared counter that is protected by a lock. So, you know, again, just think about this. If you're instantiating lots of objects dynamically, uh, like in a game, you might want to pre-allocate as many of these objects as possible. Um, so again, just, just something to think about uh, as we think about this uh, design here. Um, now, only the cons with this flyweight pattern are you are losing fine grain control of every single object. Again, that's a design decision, but I'm, I am telling you what you lose by sharing and having all the objects being effectively clones of each other. <laughs> so, um, you know, you just have to decide 
if you want your flyweights to always be uh, the same here. Now that doesn't stop you, for instance, from looking at this model here. I could, I could certainly create another concrete instance of a tree where I have like unique trees, for instance. Uh, let's go ahead and copy this here. And what if I just want a uh, unique tree here that has uh, a model mesh here, right? I can do this, right? The state is no longer shared with anything. Uh, everything belongs to each concrete instantiation of these trees. There's no reason I can't have both of these in my code base if that's important and you need, you know, that level of granularity of control here. Um, so I'll, I'll just put a comment here. I'm going to comment this out here. Uh, and again, the basic idea is if you need every, uh, if you need the flexibility of having unique objects, uh, then, you know, you can still have it. Just create another class here. Uh, this, however, does add some complexity. Okay, <laughs> to your code. Okay, uh, sometimes we have to live with complexity. That's fine, uh, but just keep in mind again that that's you know something that you would have to consider or maybe think about uh, your pattern if you want that level of granularity. Um, that's why you can benefit sometimes with this like flyweight model factory. Again, maybe there's different flags that you can sort of put some of that complexity into your factory where you're instantiating these objects. Uh, like you could have a git flyweight and a key and then a comma always make new or something like that. And it'll just generate a, you know, a, a new key for you. That's unique. Uh, again, these are different like things that you could think about like um, in your code. Again, just things to think about. Um, but again, that adds to this point that you might have some additional complexity when thinking about this flyweight pattern. But I think that's part of the fun of doing software design to think about some of these trade-offs here. And ultimately, you've got another tool in your tool belt. Alrighty, folks. So with that said, let me go ahead and uh, give you some more resources here. Again, the Great Programming Patterns book is an excellent one. Uh, and there actually was in Boost a flyweight here. Um, so I think that was kind of interesting because you could read about at least the rationale and, you know, get some other explanations about it. So I thought that was interesting. I'm sure there are other implementations that you could look at as well. Uh, the last thing I wanted to show you is I have on courses.mshot.io, uh, all of my software design patterns are going in here. You can enroll for free, but the idea is that you can track your progress in a more distraction free zone. So feel free to take advantage of that. If you like, we reference a bunch of different patterns like singleton and factories today. So those are also covered there. Uh, for your enjoyment. So anyways, folks, thank you for your time and attention. I hope you enjoyed that video as we finish off the flyweight and got to see an implementation and again, some of the different trade-offs again with, you know, giving you the ability to play with your code. I think in particular with these structural design patterns, as you learn them, they become even more important for you to think ahead of time about how you want to structure your code. Uh, but of course, that comes with experience and just trying things sometimes. Uh, but now, at least you have another tool on your tool belt. Anyways, folks, with that said, thank you as always for your time and attention. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.